Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar. We're Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. I've got the uh, live Deerfield underwater cam up. Lots of turbulence out there. It looks like the schools are trying to hold together. Uh, and not unlike the current situation out there we've got right now. Lots of turbulence, folks, happening. Uh, anyways, camera a little choppy today. Let me kind of reduce this out of here and get into what we're going to talk about, which is precious metals. Also, if you notice, I didn't roll the coin yet. Um, and we're going to go into uh, my meme for the day. It's not really a theme or quote. It's just my meme for the day. For most of you that know me, yesterday was my, my two years of doing videos straight, not missing a day. Lucky me, knock on my wooden head. Uh, we got them out pretty late, like last night, got out real late. Yeah, doing it from handheld is so much harder. It takes so much longer to upload these things. Uh, but uh, based on my last two years of videos, I think some of you can all say that let's all take a moment to be thankful that Brian does not own a tank. <laughs> and actually, I'm really a pacifist at heart. I really am. I, I, um, I'm a peacemaker at heart, you know, but uh, I, I'll defend myself and I'll certainly, uh, well, I'll certainly defend myself and uh, the people that I care about and others. Uh, but no less, uh, let's move into precious metals markets. I kind of like this meme here. It kind of describes me a little bit, at least, and I think some of you as well. Independent critical thinkers. Thank God some of us don't have tanks. Uh, uh, i also going to start out, before I get into gold prices, I want to read a little segment here from what's going on. I know most of you are probably looking at gold and silver prices going, ah, oh, shit, they did it again. And you're absolutely freaking right. They did it again here. They dropped the hammer somewhat. Uh, and the chart guys watching out there, they took it below that $25 level, sir, it looks like. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I'd like to hear from you there. Uh, but no less, I understand what charts do, and I understand that it's not gospel. If it was, we'd be making billions on it. Uh, but no less, uh, um, it pulled back a little bit more than uh, the chart guy had suggested at $25. I was feeling the same way. I was going to hold on to that $25 too. Not even being a chart person. It's just kind of a gut feeling. But again, with the big COMEX shorts out here and the way they manipulate these markets, the CRIMEX markets, uh, it doesn't surprise me at any given time. You know, they don't, they don't care about the charts. They can just go in there and spoof the markets overnight, which I think is what happened last night, uh, uh, pretty certainly, uh, that it happened last night, and I'll show you a bit. But anyway, let's take a look at Ted Butler's newest article here. I'm not showing you anything that he hasn't talked about already. This is kind of older news, but I want to rehash it. It's in his new issue, and I'm not going to show you the rest of it because that wouldn't be fair to Mr. Butler, who makes money off this. Uh, but no less, uh, good read. Uh, Ted says, when I started measuring the financial performance of the eight largest COMEX gold and silver commercial shorts in June 2019, these traders had always been able to reduce any open losses they had to, uh, temporarily incurred in adding shorts on higher prices before rigging prices lower and buying back added shorts. That was true when they were out close to $4 billion in the summer of 2016, their previous worst temporary loss and every time previous to then, okay? So they were sitting at a $4 billion loss in 2016. Uh, but since, oh, let me not go down too far, I don't want to, uh, but since 2019, the eight big commercial shorts have been able to either reduce their losses to break even for the first time ever since June, two, since June 2020, the losses at quarter ends have ranged from $8 billion to $14 billion, with a loss at the most recent March 31st, 2022 quarter end amounting to $13 billion. Folks, they're on the hook for $13 billion uh, as of March 31st, 2022. Uh, according to the data that uh, Mr. Butler is so brilliantly able to read and convey to us. Uh, by the way, if you're not a subscriber to Ted Butler's uh, uh, newsletter, I would highly recommend it. Uh, especially if you're a YouTube talking head or a, uh, uh, another dealer out there that deals in a lot of silver. I think he, he explains uh, you know, for years I knew that these markets were manipulated. I just didn't know exactly how. And uh, I got to thank Ted Butler, who was one of the uh, guys out there uh, decades ago, actually, when I first started reading about uh, reading what Ted Butler was saying. But uh, uh, of more recent, I've learned a lot by subscribing to his newsletter. Again, can't share it with you. If you'd like to buy it, you can certainly subscribe to it. But I'll share the basic knowledge behind what he's saying. And it really hasn't changed in decades. Ted has been talking about these uh, big commercial short positions. Uh, how they do it. I mean, there's specifics and there's a lot of subtleties that go along with this, uh, including a lot of technical detail. Uh, but no less, uh, he's absolutely correct. We've got big, um, well, here, let's kind of read on here. And uh, $13 billion 
uh, dollar in losses. Perhaps the most significant blow to the eight big comic shorts came on the spring of 2020 when J.P. Morgan, uh, which had been since 2008 the biggest and most dominant of the eight big comic shorts, abandoned the short side completely leaving the remaining large commercial shorts without having a dominant ringleader. Remember, uh, J.P. Morgan is the godfather of corruption when it comes to banking and commodities and other stuff. And Mike, in my opinion, maybe not banking, but when it comes to their trading, uh, they are the godfather of corruption, in my opinion. And in the opinions of people who are a lot smarter than me, including Ted Butler. Um, anyways, uh, they left the remaining large commercial shorts without the dominant ringleader, which would have been J.P. Crook Morgan's. Uh, for the first time in decades, having amassed a hoard of physical silver and gold bullion, 1.2 billion ounces and 30 million ounces of silver respectively, J.P. Morgan had taken advantage of its ability to suppress prices on the COMEX as a means of accumulating physical matters on the cheap and the down and the low. Uh, and of course, we know what's going on with Bank of America. I've been talking about BOA. Ted Butler actually brought up BOA to my attention, Bank of America. Bank of America has this huge derivative short position that they owe to J.P. Morgan. Uh, and uh, Ted brought up many years ago, and I, I, I talked about this this week in one of the videos here, is how uh, in 2008 Bear Stearns, J.P. Morgan took over Bear Stearns because Bear Stearns went down, took over their big silver short position. I think that's when uh, uh, Bear Stearns was uh, keeping the price on the low low by manipulating silver prices for many years. They had got caught in a silver derivative position in 2008, which would have cost them, according to what Ted said at the time, three, three and a half billion dollars in losses, which was huge in 2008 dollars especially. Uh, a lot of people think Bear Stearns was taken down simply by the mortgage crisis, but they also, on top of that mortgage crisis, had a 3.5 billion dollar margin call uh, that very same day they went down. And don't, people don't talk about that. Who inherited that? Uh, not the margin call, but who inherited that silver position? I believe it was J.P. Morgan. Uh, and remember in 2012 when gold and silver was sailing through the roof? Uh, I'm going to refresh this while we're talking here. Uh, excuse me. Let me see. There's my screen. Refresh right there. Uh, remember 2012 when gold was uh, well over 2000 and silver was nearing that $50 mark? Guess who spoofed the fuck out of the 2012 market, the, the big bull market we were in? We would have been much higher prices then if JP Morgan hadn't spoofed the shit out of that market, and we know they did. 2012 markets only went down because of J.P. Morgan and big commercial uh, short positions, uh, uh, manipulative, uh, uh, in my opinion, illegal short positions allowed by Comex, who is owned by the CME group, uh, and we call them Crimex now, uh, allows this behavior. And the CFTC, the regulating agency, has a frickin' clue, man. Clueless fucking people, or either complicit one or the other. Uh, God, I'm, I'm talking about the same stuff we've been talking about for a long time, two years now. Uh, boy, got sick of it for a little while, but uh, it's a truth, man. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, people hate the people who speak the truth sometimes, you know. And let's take a look at markets here. Silver, again, monkey hammered overnight, but I can show you where that happened. What's this provide the opportunity to do is not to get disappointed. I know some of you folks are, are slightly disappointed out there. Uh, and it was kind of looking like that something, uh, well, something is happening, folks. But again, you cannot forget that in the silver markets, you've got these big commercial banks that are looking at losses at probably 13, 14 billion, 12 billion, who the frick knows what it is, much larger than it's ever been. So they and COMEX, uh, again, remember COMEX is the casino, CME uh, is, owns COMEX, and COMEX is the casino in which all these big commercial banks uh, are cheating, all right? And COMEX allows the CFTC is the regulating agency that's supposed to keep an item that, don't, that, that doesn't. Uh, they're either stupid or complicit or, and or both. Uh, but no less, uh, again, I know I'm sounding a little repetitive here, uh, this is what's causing these markets to go down, particularly in silver. I won't say so much in the gold market, uh, but the silver market is just sheerly manipulated by a bunch of big banks uh, that are in big trouble right now if they don't cover these positions. So, of course, they're going to try to, to run these prices down, and, I've, and this is what's been happening for quite some time. But uh, Ted also talks about what happens when the uh, long positions no longer are willing, you know, the, uh, uh, what is it, the institutional 
uh, uh, commercial monies out there, you know, the, that, that uh, take the long positions? What happens when they start reducing these long positions? What happens when uh, uh, one of the, another big commercial bank just kind of exits the situation? Uh, uh, then you're going to see prices go up dramatically. But right now they're sitting on huge losses, and don't forget who the Crimex CME works for. They work for these big commercial banks. Uh, you saw it happen in the nickel markets. Uh, so the range is 1937 and 1957. Gold's holding on pretty good percentage-wise. Looks like silver's got monkey hammered the most. But again, that's the, probably out of all the metals markets. I mean, silver people and people that have been investing in silver for years have to feel like uh, uh, the red-headed stepchild, beaten down all the time. And it's kind of true to some degree, but you know what? You know who your oppressor is. You know who the people screwing us are. And you know with, with what Ted Butler tells us and what we learn from other people and the fact that there are shortages out there. And they're in a desperate situation. So keep buying the frickin' dips. Buy that physical, folks. Ted Butler also likes ETFs. I'm not a big fan of them. Um, you know, Ted believes, and uh, he's probably right, that they do own the silver. But, you know, one of the things I've always wanted to ask Ted, yeah, they, they do own the silver on paper, but is it how many other people may own that as well? That's just a question I've had that I've never got a chance to email Ted, and I probably will. Uh, but no less, let's take a look at the monkey hammer prices of silver, 2460, the low, 2522, the high. So a second day, so big swings in silver. Uh, platinum just being held down. Uh, but gosh darn, I still like these platinum uh, uh, sub-level, you know, sub thousand dollar levels. And palladium, who cares? Nobody really screws around with that stuff, except for industry, maybe. Uh, so 2469, what does that tell me? That's a big freaking buy the dip deal, folks. So buy the freaking dips when you can. Premiums suck, I know that. Hey, and just to confirm when and, and how these markets are being monkey hammered, look at this. Overnight markets, when, when only big commercial collusive uh, banks would trade. Uh, take a look at this. Well, not so much in spot gold price. Take a look, though. Uh, spot gold drifted down in the New York's Globex, which is really Crimex markets. There's the New York, the main Crimex market. There's the main family right there. And they run a 24-hour market where they can monkey hammer markets down as well, which you see. We haven't seen in a little while, but we, we're, they're getting back into that overnight monkey hammer again. Take a look at that pre-New York Open. Uh, you can see that the price of gold gets monkey hammered. But where can you see it the most? Where do you see that major monkey hammering going on? You see it in the uh, early morning markets today. Take a look at that. There's the green. Look, and, and I doubt it's London where these big trades are being made, um, or nor Hong Kong. This is New York Globex markets most likely. And again, speculation on my part, but Globex is a 23-hour uh, uh, market run by uh, CME, Crimex Group. Uh, who uh, owns the New York NYMEX as well, New York CRIMEX as well. And uh, take a look at that overnight market. Who the fuck trades silver like that in the middle of the night? Give me a break. That's just pure, uh, simple monkey hammering. And again, if I'm wrong and anyone knows how to interpret this particular data and find out who made these trades and when they made these trades and which market, was it London? Doubtful. Uh, but no less, I'd like to see that. Uh, otherwise, I'm sticking to my, uh, uh, my theory that uh, uh, these markets have been monkey hammered overnight by big collusive spoofing shorting uh, scumbags. <laughs> How sad. Oh man. Let me show you why you don't have to worry about any of this stuff and doubt and fear is not a big problem for gold and silver stackers for the most part uh, when it comes to where the price of gold and silver is heading. All right. You know, if you're new into stacking, a lot of, again, that's the big thing is mostly the new folks are people that are a little bit skittish because they see these down prices. And again, manipulative behavior. I mean, that's what we've been seeing with the price of silver primarily is a lot of heavy manipulative behavior, uh, collusive manipulative behavior, again, by you know who and uh, you know where, all right? And apparently uh, uh, it's just kind of in our faces and they don't even care at this point. But you know what? That'll blow up in their faces uh, and this too shall pass, okay? Uh, so uh, basically doubt and fear is not a big issue for most of us seasoned folks out there. And uh, I'll show you why here. Here's the primary reason why, okay? Let's take a look at, uh, uh, well, hold on. I wasn't going to get into that chart right now. Let me get into this chart. But uh, uh, hey, hell, what the heck? All right, let's talk about gold or oil prices versus oil prices. Now, for a long time, um, I kind of felt that gold and uh, oil prices had separated, but really, to some degree, they had not. They seemed to kind of follow each other throughout this timeline right here. Uh, one lagging behind another a tiny bit there. Uh, I think the uh, gold is uh, uh, actually gold lagging behind uh, uh, oil a little bit, but take a look at that spike at one time. 
That was in uh, 2008, the financial crisis here, when everything kind of shut down. Oil was sitting about $115 a barrel. And uh, uh, take a look at where we are right now with the price of oil, too. Again, the two markets moving nearly in tandem. Uh, boy, there goes someone not having a good day. Uh, oh, anyway, sorry about that. I'm easily distracted. Uh, so, uh, uh, and as you know, we sit right on the roadway. If you watched our video yesterday, you can see the little street and roadway there. Uh, but uh, oil and uh, gold kind of moving in tandem right now. And if anyone thinks that the price of oil is going to get any cheaper, is only diluting themselves. Now, I, I am the strong belief that, that we have, as a whole, our government has, uh, uh, and it's been good for us. It's actually been, uh, but you know, we've been manipulating the price of oil and resources for how long the United States has. I mean, uh, we don't pro we produce a certain amount of resources. We import a lot of resources, and and there's a lot of financial reasons why uh, our government would want cheap oil here. I mean, uh, every country would want cheap oil. Okay, it's good for. Uh, it's good for prosperity across the board. So if you're spending less money on oil, you're spending more money in other places, uh, and which means usually the economy is good as well, okay? So, I'm, again, I'm explaining to you why you do not need to fear, because you know this stuff. You should not fear things that you know. You should only fear the unknown, okay? Uh, if you start fearing the known, then you basically uh, have blown any plan out of the water. You have to plan for the known, all right? Uh, uh, but fear, you know, it, relax when it comes to gold and silver, uh, because uh, oil prices are not getting cheaper, period. They're not getting cheaper. They're going to continue to climb. And if you look at the parallels between gold and silver, you'll see that they do pretty much work in tandem here. Uh, something I ignored for many, many years here as well myself. Uh, however, you know, you look at all this data and you look at all these things and you, sometimes you forget about some of this stuff. Uh, where was I going from here? I keep going back here. No, that's, a, that's doubt and fear. For doubters and fear people out there, relax, especially when it comes to gold and silver. I can't tell you what will happen when it comes to our idiotic uh, governments and media out there. Uh, there's good reasons to doubt and fear them people because, again, you never know where they're coming from. But uh, uh, certain things we know. We know um, uh, who the uh, market manipulators are. We know how they do it. We know with whom. And, and we, we know a lot of details, all right? Uh, so in that segment of the world is growing larger and larger. Uh, there's more and more people, whether it's the silver prices or gold, whether it's whatever it is out there, from elections to wars to you name it, people are, are starting to realize that the wool is pulled over their heads for the most part, especially now, even more so now. There seems to be some kind of a, um, oh man, mass group think out there that's going on. That's uh, Well, anyways, I'm, I'm digressing here a little bit. So here's the reasons you don't have to worry about uh, uh, gold and silver continuing. Uh, or going down uh, because the price of oil is going to continue to go up. What else is going down or up? Let's take a look here. Uh, I'm going to do a quick refresh. Hopefully I still have internet access here. And it looks like I do. I had a little uh, uh, outage there for a bit here. We'll go back to... Uh, I'm just curious. Let's take a look at uh, um, stocks and bonds real quick. Where's that market sitting at? Eh, not much at all. Just kind of midway. I'm going to take a sip of coffee here. Uh, hey, while I'm taking a sip of coffee, I, I've been doing the coin. I missed the coin. I said yesterday in video today, I'll do the coin flip later, and I never did the coin flip. So I did miss the coin flip, but the coin flip is, uh, you know, I miss them sometimes. Let me uh, uh, do today's coin flip and see where we are, uh, why we take a look at the uh, stock market and the equities market. And you know what? I did a terrible flip. Oh, but it's a bull. All right. <laughs> Uh, not so much today. Maybe it's talking about tomorrow. That's what that's what it's talking about. The, the coin. I, I just flip it and tell you what it is. I let you guys figure out what it's for for yourselves. <laughs> uh, Dow Jones, everything in the green here, but not much. But again, you know my opinion when it comes to that market. I think it's being propped up by the uh, U.S. government and the Fed, who honestly believe that the stock market, the whole world, revolves around the stock market. Uh, maybe it does. I don't know. I, I don't think it does. I think it revolves around small business and the workers out there. Um, and uh, uh, well, anyways, and people that actually aren't in bed with government. Let's take a look at another reason why the fear and doubters have nothing to fear and doubt when it comes to the price of gold and silver. One thing is gold and silver has been around for 5,000 years, so it's never going to bro go broke. You know what I mean? It's got a good track record, unlike some other uh, 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 so-called monies out there. And uh, uh, let's take a look at the uh, consumer price index. This is just, folks, hold on a second. I was just going to type in. Uh, the one year. Take a look at the one year even. 
my God, let's take a look at the two years since this administration's been in. And what are we looking at that? Look, this is the consumer price index for all concern, uh, urban consumers, purchasing power of the consumer dollar in the average U.S. city. And the problem with this chart, folks, it's based on official numbers from the government, which we know that their inflation numbers are completely screwed. But even with their completely screwed inflation numbers, which are supposed to reflect better than what they're, you know, what we are looking at, they still suck. <laughs> even these skewered uh, inflation numbers still suck. Take a look at this over the period of two years. Look at the decline in the buying power of the dollar. And again, what's that? Why am I telling you that? Because that's another reason you don't have to doubt and fear precious metals at all. Because they, they have outlived uh, empires, they outlived countries, they outlived, uh, um, you name it. Gold and silver has been around for 5,000 years. Outlived a lot of different things, all kinds of different money as well. And uh, the reason why? is fiat. It's fiat, really. It comes down to fiat. Gold and silver really is money. Uh, everything else is fiat. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, a cool. Well, I was talking about inflation rates, all right? This is pretty cool. I think it's based on, um, it's called the dashboard, and I think it's some kind of digital, uh, 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 I don't even know what to call it, trueflation category importance. Uh, but supposedly this can't be manipulated. It's done on some kind of uh, uh, Ethereum or something like that. I forget what they called it. Uh, some of the benefits or some of the benefits of the uh, technology out there. So supposedly this has been tracking everything and uh, take a look at the inflation rate almost day to day. Look at this uh, on a daily basis Monday through Friday. Uh, it, it, and the, here's the importance. Hogs, live cattle, cocoa. Uh, so this is really a cool site. I recommend you keep it up here. Uh, again, uh, that moves around right there. The highest year to date has been 13.9%. Currently sits at 12.5%. I think they use real products and real numbers, unlike, again, uh, the people that compile these numbers right here. And according to Trueflation, uh, we are currently today sitting at a 12.5% uh, 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 increase in the, uh, or decrease in our value, you know, the dollar, the value of, Oh my gosh, <laughs> the buying power of the dollar. Got a little tongue tied there. Let's see what Trueflation is, by the way. I want to see who they are. Uh, I hope you don't mind. And let's take a look here. Trueflation. Hmm. Looks like they explained it. There you go. Uh, pretty cool site. Uh, the real inflation index you don't need to trust. Check it yourself. Daily, unbiased, data driven, real market inflation rates available on chain for your. Okay. Uh, inflation rates are sky high, as we know. Uh, there's a lot of controversy around the government's inflation index. We just talked about this. Uh, and here we go. This is what this is. We've created a custom index to find out the true inflation rate. Headline inflation you encounter in the news is a yearly change in CPI, consumer price index. We've researched, deconstructed, and remastered the official CPI. Uh, so they went back and did the official CPI to create a metric that reflects the true price change in the markets. The resulting U.S. Trueflation uh, Index offers daily inflation updates. So this is the real deal based on new technology, folks. It's pretty goddamn often, uh, or awesome, I'm sorry. Uh, build your DeFi products, all right? Uh, but anyways, wanted to point that out. Uh, you can uh, index it. It's free. It's called the app, Trueflation.com. Gives it daily. Uh, and we're going to keep this on the show for a little while. See, we're sitting at 12.5% right now. I even think that's a tad low, but... Uh, uh, maybe that's with all the products taking into consideration that they have right here. All right. Uh, what else? What else should I show you, folks, that are in the uh, doubt and fear uh, mode with precious metals right now? Again, don't doubt and fear precious metals. Been around for a long time. This is just a temporary bout downwards. Uh, again, provides the opportunity to buy it. Do what? Buy the freaking dips. Okay. Uh, and again. Uh, I've showed you the inflation index. Let's show you another inflation index back here. Let's show you, sorry, I didn't mean to hop around so much. Uh, let me see if I can close it out right there. Let's show you the United States Misery Index. How miserable do you feel? This has been around for a while. It takes into two data figures it takes into account, and it probably takes the official data figures as well, uh, which is probably uh, pretty conservative to say the very least. I mean, if we're seeing true inflation sowing uh, 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 an inflation rate of 13.9% uh, currently, uh, then the inflation rates that they're, they're using on a lot of these websites is the official site is half of that. Uh, so figure these bars are even bigger than what they're indicating. Uh, unemployment, maybe not so much. Uh, the blue bar represents inflation. The red bar 
Um, oh my gosh, no, the blue bar represents employment, the red bar represents inflation. Uh, let's move down throughout history here. Now, for those of you that get motion sickness, this will cause it right here. But you can see the average is four, five, six, four, five. Uh, there, during the, uh, who was that? That's the Eisenhower period. Um, and we see that inflation raised its ugly head during this period of 58. During the year of 1958, look at unemployment, actually. Um, that's pretty impressive, actually. Inflation rates are fairly low. What caused what caused the high unemployment rate in '58? I kind of don't really know, but you see, employment uh, employment rates kind of uh, uh, teetered off here, uh, still kind of on the high side through the Kennedy era. But remember, we we're coming off some pretty big wars there as well, uh, and going through the Vietnam War here as well, uh, Korea, Vietnam. Uh, but after uh, Johnson, you see that things start to taper off here quite a bit except the inflation rate. Where does that happen? That happens uh, in 68. Uh, and again, remember, this is when uh, uh, the world started getting nervous about the United States overspending, overspending, okay? Uh, we're, this is when France started getting worried about taking their gold out of our country. So, and then, then here's Nixon. Look at the inflation rate after Nixon. The spending just went crazy. Um, inflation rates went crazy for so many different reasons. Uh, what have we got? A maximum of 11 or 11.67 uh, right there. All right, I'm going to speed through a few generations here. And as you can see, right before Ford, it even gets worse. But the country was in a really bad place at this time, 1972, 1973. We just went through the gas crisis. Um, hmm, gas crisis. Get it, folks? Gas crisis. You think you're going to see any more of these red lines right here? Unemployment doesn't look too bad, but inflation looks pretty freaking horrible. Uh, look what Ford had to go through here. And no matter you know, figure one termer for Ford for sure. Uh, Carter uh, inherits that mess and doesn't make it any better. In fact, it just gets worse on him throughout the uh, uh, 80s here. And you remember, we're talking about inflation of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. People like to think of inflation back at that period, just the 70s. Oh, short period. No, man. It was a long period, protracted period, where it kind of got better, then it got worse, and then it kind of got worse throughout the situation here. As you can see, unemployment figures are quite high. But you know what? Let's skip down to a couple presidents. There's Bush. Uh, where's the high on him? 11.6. Not much of a difference there. But it looks like when we get into the Clinton era, uh, say as you will, um, whatever you want to say, it looks like we're going through an era of prosperity here. Um, <laughs> I know that's tough for some uh, or the red people to take out there. But again, is it, you can't attribute this stuff to the presidents necessarily. Wars maybe come in, black swans, that kind of thing. But these things you can mostly attribute it. Uh, inflation and uh, uh, unemployment, well, inflation mostly. Uh, you're going to see is a direct result of the banks, central banks, not presidents, okay? So don't get too excited out there, you blue people, when you see that Clinton had some good years here. Um, it just the cards fell in his favor at the time, as they did for George Bush for some time there as well. Uh, but let's move down here. Gosh, I'm getting really heavy into this uh, uh, President Obama. High unemployment rates, high unemployment rates. But don't forget this was 2008, the financial collapse. Uh, created and helped by uh, uh, government, but created by uh, created by government and uh, commercial cent or some central banks. All right, uh, that's self-created. We've never healed ourselves since then. We've just kind of put band-aids on the patient and plump more pump more plasma into the bleed-out patient, which is money. More money into the system. More money. More money. Trump seemed to enjoy some good times here, as did Obama uh, for quite some time, and then uh, 2020 hits uh, everything. The shit hits the board. Look at that. Unemployment figures go down substantially to where they are today, but look at this rising inflation rate. I'm pretty sure that, and again, what does this got to do with the price of gold and silver, folks? Well, it's getting worse. We're going to see, like we did in the 80s, uh, the, the, the gold market in the 80s was phenomenal, phenomenal compared to U.S. dollars compared to today. You know, got to think about that in the 80s, 1980 dollars, what that market was. Even 2012 market, pretty impressive compared to 2012 dollars compared to what it is today. All right. We're going to see stupid money with gold and silver. Gold, especially silver, once these uh, collusive, manipulated banks are washed out, go broke or do a uh, Bear Stearns on us, which probably shouldn't be too long before Bank of America does a Bear Stearns on everybody. Uh, hey, you can take that to the bank. <laughs> Again, my opinion, all right? So this is why you don't have to worry, folks. You, uh, you warriors out there and you folks that have doubt and fear about precious metals, don't worry. Be happy. Um, where are we going from here? I'm going to look and do something that I do better than most all the guys out there. Nothing has changed. Yesterday's video, 
uh, which got out late last night. Sorry about that. That's what happens when I try to do a handheld video. Uh, it takes all day to edit <laughs> or try to get uploaded. Uh, but uh, best deals out there are still 100 ounce bars. I'm gonna have some good deals on kilos coming in pretty soon, don't have them at the moment. Uh, of course, uh, as you know, I advertise to beat JM Bullion, Atmex Bullion, SD Bullion, you know, the big 800 pound gorillas out there. Nothing wrong with those companies, but you know, if, even if you don't live in South Florida, you can't come and deal with me because you know that I, I, I can't ship anything out, folks. So if you don't live in South Florida, you're unable to visit my store, I can't deal with you. My recommendation is find yourself a good local dealer. There's nothing wrong with JM, Atmex, or SD, but you know what is right? What is right keeping that money local, especially if your local dealer can match or beat these prices, or at least come close to them. And I can do that. I can match and beat these prices. And I hope you have a good dealer that can as well. There's my plug for the day. Uh, 100 ounces over Tony, uh, Silvertown Pony Silver Bars. Uh, looks like the best deal out there. Still generic 100 ounce bars uh, when you figure it price per ounce. Uh, and again, good opportunity to buy the frickin' dips today, folks. Why the hell not? Markets are down. Um, and what else here? They have some kind of deal going on with these cyber metal things. They have them on special. Uh, but again, I think for most generics, most people can beat their prices as well. Your local dealer should be able to. I'd stay away from sovereign products like Silver Eagles, Maple Leafs. Premiums are just too high. Listen, in my opinion, these 100 ounce bars at at uh, between four and five bucks over spot is just insane in my opinion and larger quantities obviously you can buy them for less i'm talking about small quantities uh so again best deals out there 100 ounce bars 10 ounce bars one ounce generic type bars stay away from silver eagles stay away from maple leaves and stay away from that other high price shit um and again if you can get you know, the, even the uh britannias are too high priced uh, uh the australian stuff seems to be a bit more reasonable but still high priced in my opinion stick with the generic stuff save yourself some dollars or buy more silver with that same money uh, not much to talk about with GATA.org right now but you know if you're a seasoned gold and uh, uh, even silver guys listen I know it's mostly about gold here but I tell you silver folks all the time uh, silver stackers where gold goes silver will ultimately follow uh, unfortunately, I think that silver's lagged way behind in this market. Gold's done pretty well. Silver has still been in the shitter because of these manipulative uh, uh, big commercial banks that I think are going to fail in their attempt to keep this down ultimately. And again, one of them or a couple of them may even go bankrupt because of it. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the news, the world news out there. You know, I've been getting a little bit uh, funky about world news, so I'm trying to back off on it about, uh, a little bit. But uh, you know, you can't help but think that this all ties into uh, what uh, 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 it ties into gold and silver, man. The decline of any empire, any empire, uh, uh, is usually uh, good for the price of gold or silver, or good for who's ever living in that empire to own gold or silver. Okay, so whether you think we're in a decline, whether you think they're in a decline, uh, whether you think no matter who you think is in a decline. Uh, the citizens of that people. And remember, folks, governments don't care about you. I don't care who they are. I don't care how uh, altruistic and, 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 you know, our government, really. Um, but I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there right now. You know, you need to be self-reliant, self-sufficient, and not rely on them for uh, uh, the truth all the time. Again, uh, smartest thing I can advise people out there is uh, independent thinking and critical thinking. Uh, so this was a very smart, brilliant move on his part. Uh, the sooner this thing ends, the better for everyone, I think, including them, including us, and including the Ukrainians, I think. Uh, but let's not even go there. I'm just tired of talking about it. Uh, you know my opinion on that stuff. And for folks that don't think I know what I'm talking about when it comes to Ukraine, I will debate anybody out there on it, okay? I'm happy to debate anyone on this. It's a subject I just know far too much about. Um, and, uh, well, anyways, let me move along from there. Uh, <laughs> Oh, well, and uh, reaction to Tesla's blowout earnings. God, that guy is, <laughs> he is like the P.T. Barnum of billionaires. I mean, that's what I like to call him, the P.T. Barnum of billionaires. And I like the guy personally. I think he's kind of cool. He sticks his foot in his mouth sometimes, but, you know, don't we all? Uh, but in, no less, uh, you got to always remember, you know, you can admire P.T. Barnum, but never forget who he was, okay? And uh, he, and again, he is, in my opinion, the P.T. Barnum out there. He's there to uh, sell the show, man. And, uh, but overall, I think his intentions are good. And I believe that he is a libertarian at heart, uh, someone that believes in, uh, 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 who, someone like myself that is socially liberal and fiscally conservative, which means that I don't care what you do in your life, just harm no others and don't make me pay for it. I think that's uh, uh, his, his uh, outlook on life as well, and it's a pretty simplistic outlook. 
Um, what else is going on out here? Not too much. I'm going to kind of move along from here. And let's see here. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, good, good. Yeah, hey, listen. The problem with this kind of stuff and the problem with idiots, these, you know, the one good thing that maybe bankers did at one time is they, they kind of stayed apolitical. You know what I mean? They didn't get involved in the middle of it. Uh, this is bad shit when we start getting in the middle of this stuff, especially with our money. I told you the worst thing we ever did was weaponize the U.S. dollar decades ago. I've been talking about this long before a lot of other talking heads have been talking about it. Weaponizing the dollar. I talked about this decades ago when we started uh, sanctions and, and trying to kick people out of the banking stand. You know, you take the dollar away from people. Listen, that, har that only harms the local populace. That only harms good, hard-working people. It doesn't harm the elite assholes like this, all right? Um, this doesn't surprise me because of the corruption in that country, all right? This doesn't surprise me at all. Major corruption. We all knew it before this war even started. Now, all of a sudden, we forget about that stuff, don't we? Well, here you go. Millions and millions and millions down that black hole. Remember when that country was trying to sell their nukes or they were worried that they were going to sell their nukes? All right, I'm going to move along from there, too. Not all of this positive for the price of gold and silver, the decline of any and all empires, the decline of fiat, all positive for the price of gold and silver. Not necessarily positive for mankind. Uh, but again, we're here to talk about what's good for gold and silver. We're here to, uh, and I'm also here to tell you, you doubt, fear people, relax. This is why you're here. Um, where are we going from here? I think into uh, yesterday's video, which was, let's see, that's going to pop up. And I'm going to hit the uh, pause button. Hey, there's my fish tank. Instead of do it, opening yesterday's show with the, uh, the ocean cam, I did it with my own fish tank yesterday. And, that's, and there, there you go. That's why it took t t 18 hours to upload that video. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I'd like to thank everyone that commented out here. I'm going to go down here. And thank you, everyone. Yesterday was my two-year anniversary of doing daily YouTube videos. I've been on YouTube for a little while, ran some of our commercials here and some other stuff, but my daily YouTube uh, videos didn't start till April 20th, uh, 2020. What a strange 2020, 2020, something like that. Isn't that weird? Uh, what a strange uh, 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 number, set of numbers. Uh, congrats. Thank you, Rick Rock. Akisha, I appreciate that. Uh, aesthetics mean something to some folks. To me, I don't know. Yeah, I'm jaded. It all looks like gold to me. Uh, thanks. To, uh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. If I say everyone's name, that'll take an extra 20 minutes here. So <laughs> I appreciate every one of you. And again, don't forget, I do read every one of your comments. I occasionally uh, comment myself out there, but uh, I read everyone's comments. And I particularly love the discussions that most of you have amongst yourself. Very intelligent, civil people you are. Um, thank you, G. I appreciate that. And if you get a chance and you're in this way, call me first to make sure I'm in. I'm trying to take some more time off, man. I've just been working my ass off the last few days, or the last few days, last few years. Uh, thank you. My voice does feel better. I feel much better. I got the uh, piss and vinegar back in me. And as I said at the beginning of the show, ah, it's good to be back to myself. Let's all take a moment to be thankful that I don't own a tank. <laughs> okay. And, uh, oh, man, here we go. That's the uh, ending of our videos here. Uh, again, I'd like to thank all of you. No coin toss, man. I'm sorry about that, but today's is a bull. Uh, you know what, Klaus? I'll do a little one. Uh, and uh, what's the point of doing one for yesterday, right? I think that wouldn't make much sense anyway. Yeah, I had a late start. I know. I know. Hey, but thank everyone here for watching. I really appreciate that. Um, this is the end of the video and where I say this is my theme for the year, maybe my theme for life, but think for yourself, question authority, um, and mostly think for yourself. Question your own narrative. Question what you know. Question what you've known since birth sometimes. Sometimes you'll find out the narrative in your brain, the, the, uh, your opinions, aren't your own. Uh, they were given to you. They were created for you. Uh, you know, so some, it's best to question yourself first before you start questioning others because once you've done that, then you become brilliant at questioning authority and you become brilliant at questioning others in a civil way. So, again, my recommendations. Hey, that's it. Thanks for watching. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. Call me anytime between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. Happy to help you out with anything you need. And again, if you don't live near me, uh, please find a good local dealer. Unfortunately, like I said, I don't uh, ship out of state. Uh, and if you got questions you'd like to ask me personally, uh, I'm pretty much busy in the day, so it's hard for me to talk on the phone, if not impossible sometimes. Uh, however, do put it in the comment section, and I'll get to your answers there, okay? Or you can email Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals, uh, and I'll try to get back to that as well. 
Hey, thanks again. Have yourself a great day, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.